Yeah, what up, YouTube? Here with Talk Boxing episode six. Uh, on this episode, I'm gonna cover the Sandor Martin Mikey Garcia fight and the Kiko Martinez Kid Galahad fight. And I'm gonna talk about Tim Tazu a little bit on this episode as well. Without further ado, let's get to it. First things first, I'm gonna cover the upset victory that Sandor Martin pulled off against Mikey Garcia, who's been on the road to redemption after after his uh, loss that he suffered at the hands of Errol Spence back in 2019. Um, that was like, I think, I don't know if that was his debut, but it was like his first title shot at 147. Mikey Garcia was making his name and climbing up through the ranks at 135 and then 140 because 147 ain't his natural weight like that and this fight was supposed to be a super lightweight but happened that uh a catch weight i think it was like 144 or something like that um because sandor martin is a super lightweight and like i said mikey garcia he's had majority of his fights at super lightweight as well and you know, when he took that L against Errol Spence, um, it's excusable. Like, I'm not saying excuses are proper or anything like that, but Errol Spence is undefeated, is the majority champion at 147. Mikey could say, oh, he, he's not really a uh, true welterweight. And, yeah, everybody that stepped in the ring with Errol Spence has suffered an L, so it's not a bad thing, and that's his only L on his record, Mikey Garcia, up until he fought Sandor Martin two months ago. And um, um, Mikey Garcia, he fought Jesse Vargas following uh, that defeat uh, against Errol Spence. That happened at 147 as well. Um, and Jesse Vargas is a more well-known name than Sandor Martin. Sandor Martin is an unknown Spaniard who only fought domestically throughout Europe. And that's not to say, you know, that's not to discredit Sandor Martin. Um, and, you know, as far as Jesse Vargas goes, his reputation is like a journeyman as well. And this ain't no knock towards Jesse Vargas either. And I don't mean no disrespect to any fighter at all, no matter who you are. And as far as Jesse Vargas goes, as, as I'm going to continue to say, he's like one of those guys, one of those guys that's a gatekeeper at 147, like, if you're an up-and-coming prospect or, you know, a welterweight at welterweight at, you know, and if you're one of those guys who's trying to, you know, uh, bounce back from, from a loss and you were one of those top guys, Jesse Vargas would be one of those guys that you, you would face to, you know, uh, step back up into the rankings, the top rankings of that division. And like I said, I say that with all due respect. And as far as Sandor Martin, this was my first time watching him, and he made me a fan. Um, he fought a brilliant fight. Thankfully, the judges ain't robbed him, and they uh, gave the fight to the right guy. Uh, Sandor Martin, he fought a brilliant fight. Um, he he showed good defense, good slick movements, utilized the ring to his advantage very well. Landed the more crisp, cleaner shot throughout the fight. Uh, was slipping punches very well. His defense, I'm impressed by. His footwork was incredible. And, yeah, man, it just fought a, a, a brilliant fight. And, you know, he was disrupting Mikey Garcia's rhythm and uh, uh, neutralizing his offense. And I had that fight score like 7-3 in favor of Sandor Martin. And Martin, like I said, you know, for like, for like these past few years, I've kind of tapped out, like, of the sport of boxing, so I ain't really been keeping, like, a full attention, like, like I, I haven't really kept up with the sport up until I say, like, like, late 2020 type shit, like, I'm now, like, tapping back into the sport of boxing, and with that being said, you know, Sandor Martin, like, you know, if, if I were really fully into boxing, like, like how I was or how I am getting into it now, like, I would have, you know, been keeping my eyes on the dudes, you know, uh, coming off a not fight win streak prior to the uh, Mikey Garcia win, and uh, he's, he's only had two defeats, never been stopped before, and I think, um, uh, how, how many, how many, uh, 
Wiz does he have? Um, Sandor Martin. Um, he he's got a, a a good record. Like I said, never been stopped before. Only two defeats. Was on a non fight win streak. Thirty nine wins, thirteen KOs. He's got that classic, you know, uh, uh, slick boxer type, you know, style, which I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of that style. And you know, he put on a boxing clinic, a classic boxing clinic for real. And you know the old saying in the sport: the whole point is to hit and not get hit. And that's what that's the type of fight that Sandor Martin fought. And with that being said, his value. Arises uh, in the market, and this puts him up for the mix at 140 pound division. And super lightweight uh, is a hot division. It's got a lot of marquee names, a lot of uh, high quality value names. And hopefully, you know, since you know he pulled off this upset win, uh, this you know adds him to the mix. And hopefully, you know those uh, uh, key mar marquee guys. At 140, don't duck him and, you know, uh, step in there with Sandor Marti. Uh, and with that being said, let's move on to the next fight for this episode. Uh, the IBF featherweight title was on the line with Kid Galahad defending uh, his uh, IBF uh, featherweight title for the first time after uh, coming off uh, his win for that title. Uh, against a Spanish journeyman, Kiko Martinez, a veteran, 35 years old. Dude had, uh, coming into this fight, he had 42 wins, 10 defeats. He's been stopped four times, two draws, plenty of bouts under his belt. He's like one of those guys at featherweight that's a gatekeeper that you, if you're a champion, like I said, just like the, you know, like how I, I was telling you about Jesse Vargas, that's like Kiko Martinez, um, so it was supposed to be like Galahad showcasing for like, you know, his first title defense. Um, but Kiko Martinez, uh, another Spaniard, fellow countryman to Sandor Martí, pulled off an upset just like Sandor Martí uh, by scoring a second round devastating knockout with a beautiful, beautifully timed uh, overhand right hand uh, that would knock out Kid Galahad out cold. And, um, yeah. This 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 was a upset. This puts the old bull uh, at the top of the of featherweight division as far as the IBF goes. Um, and as far as the in-depth analysis goes for this fight, Galahad man, he was off to a good start, man. He was fighting a good fight up until the knockdown in the fifth. Uh, he started off fast, moving around the ring well, throwing good combos with accuracy, switching stance while attacking. Um, and also utilizing angles to attack them. And Kiko, on the other hand, he was starting off slow. He looked jittery, off balance, and his legs looked like it wasn't up under him. Very hesitant. It looked like, you know, um, he, he, he didn't want to throw his punches. And he was having trouble keeping up with Galahad's movement. And he couldn't really chase Galahad like the way he wanted to. Couldn't cut off the ring. And... Yeah, he, he, he was he had a wobbly stance and he just didn't look like he was in the fight at all. And, and, and then in the fifth round, things would all change. That's when uh Kiko Martinez started to find some success in his offense, started cutting off the ring, started catching uh Galahad's rhythm, started finding some uh, uh success with his uh punches, and in the fifth he would drop uh uh not again. Yeah, he would drop Kid Galahad with a overhand right hand, which would uh, ultimately win Kiko Martinez a fight. At the end of the fifth, he would drop him with a beautiful overhand right hand. And when Galahad went into the corner, he didn't look like you know he was all there. And as soon as the bell rung for the second round, Kid Galahad would get caught with that same punch. But this time, he wouldn't get up. The referee would call the hold to the bout. And then you have the Kiko Martinez as a new IBF featherweight champion. And the featherweight division ain't <clears throat> really, you know, all that hot. It's, it's, it's got some names. Uh, as far as Kid Galahad goes, this was his first title defense at uh, at at, uh, at featherweight. And, and the IBF featherweight title has been the title that he's been chasing after for a long time. Um, 
his uh his only uh what you, what you call it his only knockout loss came from that fight. Uh, I'm talking about the Kiko Martinez fight, but Josh Warrington, the former IBF uh featherweight champion, gave a uh, Ken Galahad a uh, uh defeat as well, and that was uh back in like 2018, 2019, um. And that that was from a uh, split decision, and you know maybe after Josh Warrington fights Marusio Lara because they had that whole oh, uh, bullshit of second fight. Lara won the first fight with that knockout, but the second fight ended because you know a, a clash ahead. So you know whoever wins that fight, maybe Kiko Martinez. Could uh, defend the, his IBF featherweight title against Josh Warrington, um, and yeah, Ken Gallagher, man, um, he's only lost to Kiko Martinez, uh, and that was like last month, and Josh Warrington by split decision, um, and you know he's only been knocked out once. Like I said, those are his only two losses: one by close decision loss and one by knockout. Uh, this doesn't mean it's the end for uh, Ken Gallagher. The featherweight division, like I said, not the hottest division. Um, as far as me reading the IBF uh, rankings right now, they have a Mexican fighter of, uh, uh, what's his name, Lopez. He's 23-2. and two. I don't know too much about him, uh, but that's the number one ranked uh, featherweight for the IBF. Uh, I, I don't know if they're going to have uh, Kiko Martinez face him next. But as y'all know, like next month, uh, Gary Russell Jr., he's going to be defending his WBC featherweight title against uh, a Filipino fighter named uh, uh, Max Sayo. Uh, I don't know too much about him either. Uh, he's undefeated, though, featherweight fighter uh, from the Philippines, 23-0, and 0, young dude. Um, that's who's supposed to fight uh, Gary Russell for his uh, WBC title. Uh, maybe the winner of uh, Mark McSayo and Gary Russell Jr. can be Kiko Martinez to unify two of the four major titles at the featherweight. Or, you know, when Laura and Warren can have that rematch and the clear winner of that, of that third fight can fight Kiko Martinez for the IBF title. If not, then the winner of Laura Warrington could fight Kid Galahad. You know, Warrington and La Warrington and Galahad had a close split decision fight. A rematch wouldn't be bad. And you know, you got Leo Santa Cruz, who's also scheduled to fight at um February of next year. He's the WBA Super World Featherweight Champion, and he's coming off that devastating knockout loss against uh, Tank Davis as well. And then you got Lay Wood, who's coming off a uh, TKO win, uh, who's the WBA regular world featherweight champion, a fellow Englishman. Maybe he could, you know, get in there with Lay Wood. I'm talking about Ken Galahad to potentially line himself up against a major fighter like Leo Santa Cruz to challenge for the Super World featherweight title by getting in there with Lay Wood. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's enough potential fights out there for uh, Kid Galahad to try and, you know, get back in the mix. And as far as Kiko Martinez, I've named y'all the options. You know, maybe, maybe IBF will have him fight the number one ranked guy at, at, for, for their organization. Or a title unification for Kiko Martinez could be a idea as well. Now I want to talk about uh, Tim Tazu, uh, the son of Costa Zoo. Uh, he he had a fight like what? Oh um, shit! Like a month ago as well against uh, Naoe Inoue's uh, brother, and uh, he's undefeated, twenty and oh, he's got a lot of hype in Australia and a lot of these boxing forums that I've been keeping my eyes on. Been talking about you know, like the featherweight division. The the super welterweight division is kind of dead, and you know it don't it, it's not hot like that. Like you have Jermel Charlo, who holds majority of the titles at one fifty four. He's gonna have that rematch against Brian Castano, and I'm gonna talk about that fight for a whole other video. 
Uh, I'm gonna preview that upcoming fight. They got a rematch coming happening in Texas again in um in February of next year. A well deserved rematch that is. Um, but a lot of people have been talking about oh Tim Fazul, he should be next in line to fight Charlo. Um, a lot of people, especially people from overseas, uh, all on the all the way other side of the map in Australia, been talking about oh Tim Fazul is the guy to beat. Uh, Charlo, and he could uh, take the crown at 154, undefeated 20 and 0, 15 knockouts. Uh, I like, but after seeing this performance, this was my first time watching Tim Fizzou against uh, Takashi uh, in in the way, and I ain't gonna lie, like I don't see him beating Cassano or Charlo. Like uh, he's got the he's got the aggression. He's he you know. Uh, but you know, from from the fight that I seen against Inouye, and this this is the lesser known Inouye. This isn't the monster Naoe we talking about. He looked at very hittable. He 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 was getting hit with some heavy shots, and I don't, I don't think he's ready for that uh, title fight against uh, Charlo or Castano, depending on who wins that uh, rematch coming up in February of next year. You know, I, he's been talking to the media at his home in Australia, talking about, oh, he wants Charlo to stop cherry-picking because, you know, that's that's been the talks within the boxing community. Oh, they be cherry-picking. They all fight, you know, the best quality opponents. As far as the Charlo brother goes at 154, he holds majority of the titles. He's trying to become undisputed. He's not at the best weight class. The middleweight and junior middleweight ain't the best weight classes in the sport right now. And part of me, part of me, I got I got a stuffy nose right now. Um, so if y'all heard like through the audio, like my nose sounding all stuffy and shit, bear with me, don't mind that shit. But yeah, Tim Fazul been talking about oh he wants uh, Charlo. I, I don't think he's ready for that yet. Um. Uh, I think he's got to get some more fights under his belt before, you know, he could, you know, get in there with uh, Jamel. And as far as uh, Jamel goes, he, he's been trying to fight everyone at 154, honestly. So I don't think that kind of talk should be thrown his way, unlike his brother at middleweight, uh, who only holds one title and hasn't attempted to unify at all. And that, that's the frustrating part when it comes to the middleweight division. And that's going to be a whole other video for a whole other topic. But that does it for episode 6 of Talk Boxing. Y'all let me know what y'all, what y'all thoughts are about all the topics that I covered on this episode in the comments. Subscribe if y'all will. Share if y'all will. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Happy holidays. And peace. <laughs>